looking at cubics today. So they behave the same as all graphs. We can move them around based on one particular point on the graph, and that point can be anywhere. But we actually are dealing with this point right in the middle here. So it's the point of inflection, which is a technical <coughs> name, and we'll learn a lot about these graphs when we get to the calculus topic. But what we do in calculus, we don't have to do in this topic. So this graph looks like this. So what is the pattern around this graph? When we draw this graph, we're going out one, up one. All right? Then we don't do the same as a parabola because it gets complicated. This is a cubic, which means we're dealing with the cubed numbers. So one cubed is, two cubed is, eight, three cubed is, 27, 64, 124, etc., etc. So what we do is we move for the next one, two out. So that's the extra one. So two out, eight. Eight up. But when we cube negative numbers, they stay negative because a negative times a negative is a positive times a negative is a negative. All right, so negative one cubed is negative one and negative two cubed is negative eight. All right, so that's our basic cubic. It's not the one we mostly use, but we are going to use it like we did the parabola. So we can use it in this form. This is not called completed square form, but it looks very, very similarly and be behaves the same way. So these points here, A and B, do give us our vertical and horizontal movement, and K does give us our either upside down or stretch movement. So in the case of this one, it's a positive. A positive cubic starts at a negative value, and comes up to positive values. A negative cubic would go like that. All right? So if we've got this as our general form, then when we draw it, we have to go through that same procedure of finding out all the bits and pieces. So A equals? Two. B equals? One. And K equals? One. A half. All right, so that gives us our point of interest, so I'm going to call it a POI because it's not, an, it's not a vertex. So our point of interest will equal 2, 1. So when we draw the graph of this, two, 1 is here. All right? So that's where this point here is going to be. The half means that we're going only half as much up as we were before. So we're going to go out one and up a half. We're going to go out two to here, and instead of going up eight, we're going to go up four. One, two, three, four. So that point, that point, that point, and a lot more points up there. A half for this one, and two out four means this will be three. So we should actually have all of these things written on it, but it's going to look like, kind of is like drawing two parabolas, one, two half parabolas. They're not half parabolas, but it's kind of like drawing that. One sweeps downwards and one sweeps upwards. What's the three? So the three is the y-intercept, all right? Two from here, one, two, and half of eight is four, one, two, three, four, all right? So the other way we can have this cubic is to have it factorised. So all we've done here from a parabola is add on an x minus e, an extra one. When we have polynomials, they have one bend for every, every power. So when it's a squared, we have one curve. When it's a cubic, it has a three power, we have two curves. So if we had eight, we would have seven wiggles, maybe. Not always, but quite a lot of the time. In a factorised form like this, we've got one, two, three different places the graph goes through the, the x-axis. If two of those were the same, then the graph would still want to go around that point, but it would stop and move down at that point, so not go through. 
So if there was two of these that are the same or one with a squared next to it, that would form a turning point on the line. So we've got this one. We go through first of all and know what everything is. So A um, C is negative two. D is three. And E is negative one. Yes, that is an E. Okay, and K is negative one. That means that this graph, instead of starting down here, I already know it's going to start from up here and go this way. All right? So when we were doing parabola, we found the y-intercept by multiplying the num these numbers. Unfortunately, that was just happened to be a tricky, that's correct. What we really should have been doing is multiplying these numbers. So negative 1 times 2 times negative 3 times 1. Negative 1 times 2 times negative 3 times 1. What does that give us? Six. Good. All right. So six is our y-intercept. So now we've got all the information we need to draw it. So unlike this one, where we only had one point and had to count points, in our cubic that's factorised, we've got six, we've got negative two, we've got negative one, and we've got three. All right, we've got these points, we know it's a negative graph, so we know it's got to start up here and it's got to go through all of those points. So we could draw it like this. All we don't want to happen is for the graph to ever go back on itself. So we don't ever want to see it going like this. Right. If I can draw a vertical line and it passes through more than one point, it's not a vertical line. On any of these drawings, you can only draw a vertical line through the graph once. So that's a no-go. Yuck. Don't do it. But what does happen is that it doesn't necessarily have to look like this. It can be as thin or as thick as you like because we don't know what's happening at these points. These are the only ones we've got. So we don't know where these are, and we can find them out, but that requires us to do the calculus topic, which we haven't done yet, and in this topic, you're only expected to sketch the graph, not draw it accurately. So this is a sketch of this graph, but this point and this point may either be way up higher or could be slightly lower, so it might mean that it's gone like this. If you can imagine if I put a pin in here, all right, and then take a piece of string, as long as the piece of string touches those pins, you can go, I could pull this all the way down here. All right? Or I could pull this one all the way up here. As long as it goes through the four points. Okay? All right. So, same sort of thing as we've been doing. Finding the equation is done exactly the same way. Go through the process of finding all the points. So we've got C equals... Negative 2, I'm just going to read from this side to this side. D equals 1, E equals 5, and my extra point is what? 0, 3. Remember, I need that extra point to put in so that I can find out what K is. So my general formula says Y equals K C plus our X plus 2, x minus 1, x minus 5. I need to find k by using this point. So 3 equals k times 2 times negative 1 times negative 5. All right, so I put 0 in for all those x's, and it's just left the numbers that are there. So what do I get next? Ten K. Good. Three equals ten K. 
So 10k equals 3, and k is going to equal 3 over 10. All right, so we're going to go through, put that back in, so we get our, our actual equation, because we don't just find k, we're finding k to replace it in the equation. Done. All right, we don't have to go any further than that. We don't have to multiply brackets out in this one. There's none of that going on. So the last part of cube x is the features. Can anybody tell me the first two? Features. Y-intercept. Good, y-intercept, which is when x equals zero, or the x-intercepts. Oh. And there may be one. Or there may be lots, one, lots, and that's where y equals zero. There's no line of symmetry here. This is not symmetrical in any way. What there is is the positive negative part, which is important. So I knew that that was positive because it started down here. But it would have come out to negative if it was supposed to. And we could approximate the... Uh, the turning points. So if we if we were doing features, then we could say, okay, I think this one here is at about negative one four. This one here is at about three six, negative six. All right. So I could approximate those two points because they might be of interest. I don't need to know them exactly. That's calculus, and I could make an approximate guess. All right, any questions about any of that? Brilliant.